Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, compiling Linux, a uh, super basic kind of rundown. I was kind of talking before the meeting, and, and the note for this is that I view this similar to signing up to do a book report on a book I'd never read, right? I'm like, I can read books. I'm not a problem with this. It's great in English. I'm going to be fine. You know, and then discovering that the book's been discontinued. Um, and the, it's a scalper's ticket item because it's banned in some places. So now you're needing to like go on to random Craigslist or eBay stuff to find it. And then then you get one and you discover a chapter's missing and another like handful of pages are missing and whatnot. And then, all right, well now I've got at least some of it. And then, then I get a different copy of it and discover that some of the same pages that are missing in the first copy have oil stains on in this copy. And uh, then you realize that they're even two different editions and, and not exactly compatible. And yeah, that's kind of how this talk has gone so far. So if it seems a little chaotic, that's because it is. Um, I did get a kernel to successfully compile twice. And I called it not after that. So. Um, topics covered here are a single example of successful compilation <laughs> uh, made using different numbers of cores, uh, options for obtaining source. There are actually several ways you can get the uh, a Linux source, which I found interesting. And then some resources or next steps for further information, basically the search engine of choice. Not covered is getting DKMS or the, the dynamic kernel monitoring the mobile test stands for module system to work with NVIDIA because video FU type stuff. And uh, yeah, I couldn't figure it out basically. So yeah, any other examples? Uh, I found dozens of things that don't work. Um, and then a little bit of a rundown uh, that I basically ripped off this guy online that has a, a, a resource, or sorry, I'm not covering the rundown of what modules and components do, uh, but the resource for the next steps, I did, did rip this thing off this guy that's pretty cool, and I'll show you that here. Um, so the software and hardware we use this is a little, uh, okay, yeah, I got it mostly updated there. Um, so that Linux source command, uh, what that does is it prints just the, the version thing of the kernel, the running kernel, and then it cuts it at the hyphen, and then prints out the first field before the hyphen, which is, how the Ubuntu package name for that source for that kernel is. Uh, and then of course the back ticks out puts the output of that up there. So uh, anyhow, I need to get need to flex, build this engine, at least allegedly I need all this. Um, but yeah, and that was from a more or less stock Ryzen 5 mini PC. Not completely because uh, well reasons that we'll get into here in a bit. Note that I I was trying this with Ryzen 5 mini PC as a uh, 5500 or 5600 you I don't remember which. They they're, it could be either. Um, it's a six core hybrid threaded, so 12 effect cores on that one. I was looking at a Ryzen 9 uh, with 12 cores, 24 effective. But yeah, DKMS stuff, and I didn't feel like popping another SSD in there and all that. So let's walk through some of these commands, right? So um, Make your Linux in our home folder and change directory into it. And then we're going to do a git clone with a depth of one. Because I don't give a crap about all the history of Linux that's done all the things forever. I'm just trying to convert ILA current kernel. So depth one basically just pulls the current source code. Um, also, you'll notice I'm using GitHub and Forvolt, Linux Forvolt has in its personal GitHub a copy of the Linux kernel that's here there, which I thought was fascinating. So uh, I used that mostly because the guide I was following said you could do that, and I did it. Um, and then I ran into issues, but hey, uh, YOLO. So uh, the, the CP tech are, right? Copy, copy all the things. Maybe that's supposed to be lowercase, but I think it cases, right? Um, from the user source, Linux source, blah, blah, blah. That's why you need that package. Notice that there is no hyphen generic after it or anything like that. Uh, and uh, no, I guess it's not actually the package things. There are other hyphens in there. But anyhow, uh, the source there is, that's that's where that is. We'll get into that in a minute. It has to do with uh, the canonical search. So basically, there are these certs from canonical that have to do with like UEFI signatures and stuff. And when you're compiling the kernel, it gives you errors and goes, I don't know about this make target 
canonical.pem stuff. And when you Google for it, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, you need your you need your distro sources so that it can build like a search chain or something or another, or it can sign something or another. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm running that command to fix those errors. Uh, then you need need is a strong word, but I need it because I'm not smart enough to do it any other way. The currently running kernel config, like what options were used to compile the currently running kernel provided by your distro? Now, this is one of those things that seems to be very distro specific because lots of things were saying, oh, you go here, and that didn't exist on my system. Others said, oh, you use this command, and that command didn't run on my system. Uh, this didn't. Uh, doing the unit uh, tap R thing uh, in the slash boot directory, going for a file that starts with config hyphen. Uh, and copying it to the doc config in our, our working directory uh, seemed to do the thing that I wanted it to do. Then what you do is you do make old config. Now, make is this, this fancy tool that does all sorts of software you can pile things that are over my head. Um, so I am probably going to say some things that are wrong here. And if slash when I do, and you know that I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, or just slap me and book on me later, whatever works. Um, so yeah, I don't intend to say anything wrong, but I'm, I'm, it's like this talk. So, uh, but also to say that because I'm so terrible at this, if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, so there's your encouragement for tonight. Uh, but basically, when you make old config, it goes through and it does all the things that are different between the kernel that was compiled using the, the config file we just copied over in the new kernel, right? There's a bunch of new code in there. There are a bunch of new options. So it basically asks you for each thing, hey, do you want this or that? Hey, do you want this or that? Hey, do you want this or that? And I just you can just hold the inner key and it picks the default for everything. Uh, there's probably a better way of doing that. I never thought that there is one command where you can say like, this tells it this runs like to the default or everything. So oh, okay. Off my head, there is some like uh, make up. Yes. Oh, yes, no, probably like some like actual build so, that, oh, like that just said, do it for me. Yeah, or something like that. But I did find the way to say yes to everything, and I found the way to say no to everything. I didn't find the way to say default to everything. Because some options are default yes, and some are default no. Yeah, I thought there's some way you can say default everything, but maybe just um, your, your way also works. Just, you know, yeah. or, pass, or just like you say, just type yes into it. and. Well, then that's not default. Well, that's true, it's not default. So, uh, yeah, I take everything. I take everything, yeah. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was uh, just probably not going to actually work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I discovered the holding error was my my best draft to go on. It usually took about like a few seconds. Like, it wasn't too terrible. Uh, if it was, it would have made a Raspberry Pi video. Okay, so now we're getting into some stuff, and I am going to tell you wrong stuff here. Uh, I included these because I was making the presentation as I was going through these commands. And then I discovered that a bunch of these commands didn't work. Um, so how is my cursor now? Oh, or is that your desktop cursor? Okay. Um, so we're getting W again. So I found this article. Uh, the, the box that this is running, the reason it's a mini PC with a Ryzen 5, the reason I even own one of those currently is because that's what's going to run my PM. So I figured, why not see what potential audio tweaks, the, some real-time audio tweaks could be made to this. And I found linuxaudio.org. Uh, the wiki has this article on building your own real-time kernel, and it tells you to go grab this real-time patch set and apply it to the kernel. It doesn't tell you how to do that, other than to go to kernel.org, and it was using like a 4.8. Uh, but other than... 4.8, I just swapped out to 6.6 .6 and then had to figure out that it was RT13. But I don't know, that's the exact same URL. So like they've kept the very consistent uh, directory structure and all that. And then I had to Google for like how to apply a patch. Uh, and then I discovered you could also just kind of hold it on for all the errors and warnings. <laughs> um, most of them were asking me if it was reversed. And from what I was seeing on Stack Overflow, uh, it was not reversed. It was just a lot of the items in the patch set were already there or something. I don't know. Um, and then you run make old config again, because again, you made a bunch of changes. You patched a bunch of things. So there's different code there. Uh, make old, old depth config. 
This is the one that was meant to separate from anybody. Oh, they pulled that confirmed. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Good to know. Um, and then select five for the fully preemptible kernel real time pre RT, which is a, a newer feature, apparently. So uh, that was okay. And that one thing there, that select five for preempt, is the one thing from this slide that actually made it through to the kernel I actually got successfully compiled. Um, then, oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe that's a lot. Maybe this thing made it through for sure, 100%. Make the, the thousand hertz timer. Uh, I don't recall 100% if the uh, preemption made it through. It might not have. Uh, but this definitely did. Uh, so it's either both or just this one. Uh, but anyhow, if you make menu config, and then you go to processor types and features, and you go to timer frequency, which is by default 215 hertz. Um, and notice that the H and Z are both capital. That is not a typo on my part. That is a typo on the kernel devs part, because the Hertz SI symbol, maybe it's not SI, but the, the unit of Hertz, the symbol for it is capital H lowercase z, as I've noted there. Um, but for whatever reason under kernel, it just uses caps for both of those, even though they do use lowercase and all over the place, so it's not like they can't do lowercase, like DMV or something. Uh, anyhow. Probably send them a pull request. I thought about it, but like the fact that I barely got this to compile, it feels like I might be nitpicky there. Um, so uh, save, okay, and then you exit the save dialog, and then you exit the practice two types of features, and then you exit the menu config. And then if you don't know how many cores you have, and you don't want to know how many cores you have, you can run this big old string. Or and, what? Or I'm wrong. Just in Brock? Yep. So the little command called in Brock, and it happily kicks out the number of cores you have. Do you have to install that separately? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the CP Quest platform. I've seen it work on Mac OS as well. So oh, interesting. Because I thought I saw someone saying something like that, that there was a single command that would do it, and I couldn't think to do it without having to. Uh, Oh, improv. Okay, well, there we go. Look at that. And now, this is the command I ran. <laughs> there. Which did work. Um, uh, in a math class in college, uh, it was a joke that we were talking about the different methods for solving the equation, right? Named after various mathematicians or the way that you do the sine and cosine or whatever, and, and like calc two or whatever. And uh, we there were a couple of students in the class. Uh, one, I don't remember his name, but his method, we named one after him. His method was you get the right answer, you don't know how, and you didn't show your work. Um, and then there was the Jared method, which was defined as going from Des Moines to Minneapolis by stopping at Chicago for directions. <laughs> oh, um, this is the Jared method for uh, mate J, tell me how many cores my processor has. Um, and yeah, uh, anyhow, in this case, it's 12. Uh, and I did use J12 in several cases after this, even though that command would have worked. I didn't feel like typing your arrow out. Um, if you run into issues, do J1 and then like go do something. Go go for a drive, go, go eat food, whatever, because it's going to take forever. But apparently, when you have multi threaded stuff doing a compile, what will happen is one of those threads will error and stop. And the others happily keep going. And then your error is like 12 pages of terminal text back because you had to wait until all 12 had errors before the thing actually stopped. Just no, some fun time with me. It was kind of a general book, general fun time with me. Yeah. So yeah. Um, anyhow, so yes, eventually this will fail, um, as I've noted here. And that's why I said I'm, I'm telling you wrong things on purpose. Um, so you make clean, things are really good command to know. It basically says undo my, my crap, more or less. And then copy the config over, uh, because who knows if the config is going to grow this point? Probably not. And then do make old config make menu config and find the same changes you have and fail over and over and over. And then eventually just go RMRF star. <laughs> and then yeah, you can get, get, well, get well, we're in the working directory. So yes, so I make sure you're in the working directory. Um and then from the command again, and then you, and then make old config, uh, which apparently I did not. 
But apparently, if you run make old config just without having a config file there, it automatically pulls the running config for you. And then it saves it for the dot config when you when it asks where you want to save it. So you don't even need to copy it over. Look at that. Aren't we efficient now? Anyhow, um, and no, I don't understand the difference between all the makes because again, you notice that back here on what was it, command one of many? Uh, yeah, over here on command one of many, we're running make old config after we copied our config over. And it took me until this page before I realized you didn't actually need to copy the config to make old config. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so make menu config, timer to one kilohertz. Uh, copy the Debian folder source, yada, yada, make J12. I'm just going to do 12 here from now on because blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to put it in PowerPoint either. Then you do this thing. I don't fully really understand what this does because one of the guys that I was following has this command and one of them does not. And it didn't really seem to care one way or the other. It just seemed to do some of the make ahead of time. I don't know. But anyhow, make BZ image uh, is one of them, which seems to be the most of the thing. Uh, then you make modules. Now, make modules is why I did not use my fancy rise because that's where the DKMS stuff came in. And NVIDIA DKMS said, F you know, F you know, F you know, I said, all right, both. And uh, who used the different machines? So uh, that didn't have any proprietary drivers uh, that I manually selected like the NVIDIA thing. Um, and then you need sudo because you're gonna, you know, be, Stuff over, right? You're actually doing the installs. So to make modules install, uh, basically, as best as I can tell, what this does is it's signing the modules with those certs that you, you know, copied the source stuff for, and then moving them to their correct locations or copying them to their correct locations on the file system. So to make install, uh, does the actual kernel files and copies them over. It also, uh, in my case, went ahead and ran update dash rev2 for me. So I didn't even need to run that separately, but we're going to do it on the next slide anyway. Uh, so then on, on this slide, we uh, do sudo update rev2, uh, which rescans boot. So it, I, again, it was, it was a, a moot point, but I did it anyway. And then sudo reboot. Uh, and at this point, you really want to make sure you have another computer ready, like a search engine of your choice. Uh, in case it all goes very wrong, because, uh, yeah, uh, a note on this, this was connected to a touch screen that is a 10.1 inch, 1980 by 1200 touch screen. So that is like $80. So the accuracy of the touch is not. And uh, it made it very interesting trying to even like hit the X on Windows um, in, within the the Ubuntu thing, because it's a GUI thing. Um, and at this point, too, uh, yeah, when it would fail to boot a lot of times, it would just go to a black screen, like video black. Like, no output, no control, alt, anything would do any of the things, no kernel error messages, no kernel panic. It would just be video black and, like, not responsive to anything over the network, anything over the the monitor or keyboard or mouse or touch screen. Uh, but in this case, uh, we got boo. So uh, the excited typing of, you know, exclamation marks with the one at the end because the internet memes and such a place. So, but uh, we're not done. Go ahead. So BZ image, the make BZ image uh, basically just compiles your kernel, compresses it, and leaves it in uh, uh, a file called arch i386 slash boot. Hmm. And then, of course, your next step, a step where you're building modules or where you're building the modules that then could be loaded in after uh, boot time into your kernel. Ah, uh, gotcha. Another thing you might want to do is when you're doing this, go into your rub setting, go in your distro. There's a there's a quiet. So if you have some sort of like, yeah, an or something called Plymouth, that will potentially walk, walk out your screen and make a nice, pretty loading screen that will be you know, outputting the kernel output. If you're doing this, you probably want the kernel output, take quiet out. Also, maybe add yourself a little extra timer. And splash, too. Or in splash, yeah. Okay. Okay. And also, um, maybe add a little extra time under grub selector. So if you have an old kernel, you can, you know, go to the one you're just provided, just in case. Yep. Um, I actually 
on this machine have better luck with stable boots with quiet and splash in there than I do without interesting than getting mm -hmm. kernel output. The kernel output seems to make it very angry. I don't know. I no explanation, right? This is this is a no name like Trinchkey, I think is the brand name of this, right? So like it could be a firmware bug from uh, a government entity overseas uh, that's doing it. But regardless, uh, yeah, I I agree. And most of my machines have the kernel output because it doesn't bother me. And if there's an issue, I don't have to go enable it. Like it's just there. Um, it, cool. it really does. And yeah, I mean, if you look fast enough, you see the pink ones. If you look fast enough. Yeah, just think on your distro, find them. But yeah, some do. Uh, or if they do, it's really fast. Yeah. I missed it. I think the door has it, but like you have to be looking because it's like the, the first thing. I think I've like, seen that on like uh, Nopix or maybe Slackware, but I don't think I've seen it on Ubuntu. Uh, but anyhow, so command seven, right? You thought we were done with commands. Oh, no, 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 no not at all. So let's do uname tag A and look at our new thing and notice that we're running Linux on host and piano 6.6.0 plus. I'm not sure what the plus is, but okay. Um, and then we're going to do a uh, pseudo grub reboot, um, and then comma tab. And then we're going to uh, look at our options. Now, this, I spent far too long figuring this out. So a little bit of background context. Uh, my primary computer and the one before it are, are dual boot. They do have Windows on separate physical uh, storage devices for the things they use Windows for. Uh, however, I do not have the option in Grub to boot last booted operating system. I have it defaulting to Linux. And the reasons for that are very intentional. One is that if I lose power, it comes back on. I want to know that I have Linux. Also, it gives me the option to pick with every reboot or every other reboot, a little caveat there, which operating system I boot into. The reason for that is if I am in Windows, if I'm remote, right? If I'm if I'm remote, I I can pick to boot into Linux by just rebooting from either operating system. If I want to boot into Windows, I can then go into Ubuntu and tell Ubuntu, hey, set it to Windows for the next boot and then reboot, and then it boots into Windows. And then from Windows, I have a different piece of remote software. And then from there, I can tell it to reboot. And it's, you know, so I've, I've got both options and I can pick which one. I don't have to just keep rebooting into the last thing. So uh, the way I typically do that is pseudo drug reboot. And then I've, I've got a little script, but basically the syntax is just you start typing the menu entry and hit tab, and then it auto completes it. And then you hit enter, and then you pseudo reboot and it reboots. However, because I'm picking a different kernel, it's buried behind advanced options for Ubuntu. This is the syntax for that. If you have something behind a submenu, and this did not exist on the internet, I swear, I swear I was just glossing over it. I promise it wasn't there. Yes, said with strong sarcasm. Uh, the one place that it does exist is when you run sudo grub reboot without any options, the tech tech help them. Um, and there's a message there. And that is actually where I actually read the, the syntax. You have to put that little uh, greater than symbol, the carrot, the, the angle bracket, whatever you want to call it, uh, that you need to put that there. Um, also note the use of single quotes so that all the spaces are gathered in the comma and all that stuff. Uh, so pseudo grub reboot, I'm picking that kernel specifically, the, the Ubuntu default latest kernel. Um, and then but what pseudo grub reboot does, right? Pseudo because it needs a, a, a root permissions. And then grub reboot is a command that picks a menu entry for the next boot. It does not actually reboot the box. In order to do that, you actually need to reboot the box, which is just pseudo reboot. And then once it comes back up, we run the command you name all. Our uh, unit tag A, and we see that we are back to our old kernel. So we now have two functional kernels on this machine, and that is the end of our commands. Uh, on to the other stuff. Make Linux.github.io. Uh, strong, strong. Uh, these are literally just screenshots ripped from there. 
uh, and and nothing more, nothing less, really. Uh, they have like three or four different uh, things, but the two most interesting to me were the kernel Linux kernel diagram, which is like kind of sort of how it's uh, like categorized or not, and then the map. The map is interactive. You can like zoom in and zoom out, and, like see the links and 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 all this stuff and things. And ninety seven point something now, probably ninety nine point seven percent of it are over my head. Uh, but it's fascinating nonetheless. So if you're interested in Carl stuff, you want to learn more, uh, check that out. Uh, some other uh, things that have been various levels of help uh, besides search engine of choice is the Linus Torvalds uh, Linux repo on, on GitHub. Uh, I actually did not use kernel.org for anything successfully. This, this talk on all my prep and everything, uh, unsuccessfully, I tried the real-time patches, uh, but they didn't work. And it could have been that perhaps there was a slight difference between the GitHub one and if I would have pulled the sources from kernel.org, it worked. I didn't try it. On the Linux kernel mailing list, though, uh, if you're into that stuff, right, kernel.org, lkml.org. I believe someone, tell me if I'm wrong in this one, but I believe that the Linux kernel mailing list was actually the one a few years back that one of the, the guy that runs the server was on vacation and had lost power or rebooted or something, and it was waiting for him to put in his full disk encryption password. <laughs> so the Linux kernel mailing list was offline for like a week because this guy was on vacation and he had to put in his, his encryption password. Um, and sounds like a shrink. That sounds like a shrink. But yeah, feel free to look it up. But I, I remember, because I remember I was remember that story and I was trying to figure out what it was, uh, I don't know, a couple months back. And I believe it was the Linux kernel mailing list. Anyhow. LinuxQuestions.org. Uh, it's one of the older forums that's actually still around. There are several other older Linux forums that just don't exist anymore. Uh, the Gen 2 forums, right? So if you're talking about piling, uh, they will tell you very, very, very opinionated options that you should and should not use. <laughs> and then ArchWiki, Arch same thing, uh, they will tell you very, very opinionated things that you should and shouldn't do. Um, and between the two of them, I'm sure you can get a wrong compiler too in there somewhere. Um, but that is it for the resources list besides this talk. Normally on this slide, I have uh, contact information for myself as to how to reach out, if you have questions about this and how much I'd love to talk more. On this talk, I don't have a clue. Don't have a clue. I don't know this stuff. Um, but it was quite the learning experience. And uh, if anyone has any questions that you want me to say I don't know to or something similar that you think I might actually be able to answer, uh, I'd be happy to take that on. But uh, yes, I'm, I'm treating this much more as a uh, fun and tactical presentation at this point than anything super duper actually useful because I uh, feel lesser for having, having uh, discovered how difficult this could be. And so, so uh, oh, sorry, I'm go sorry. ahead, Jen. Uh, um... <laughs> Are there any uh, kernel configs sort of like super stripped down for like batch processing? Oh, I'm sure there are. Where you find those, I don't know. My recommendation though would be to find find a, a distro that's done more or less what you want and start with their old config. No, this would be like the IBM Blue Genome where you take out almost every single feature your application doesn't need to reduce the OS jitter. Yeah, like I say, I'm sure there's a thing like that, but I, I don't know. If I were looking to build a strip down kernel, I would find an OS that I I appreciated their kernel and go from there. Like the real time audio stuff, uh, one of the recommendations actually of LinuxAudio.org, the place where I got the real time patch set instructions, they didn't work. They said uh, if you really want to do audio processing and really want a kernel for audio, what you should do is you should find a distro focused on audio. I personally would use Ubuntu Studio if that's still a thing because that's that's the one I've used in the past. And then uh, and then modify their code if I needed a little bit more to it. Uh, if it were a robotics thing, right, they need to be more real time, I might find like a, a real time, you know, one of the many real time Linux projects and, and take their distro and then start there. So I'm not familiar with the NVM juices, they're not familiar with 
uh, the batch processing, but it, I might take, in that case, I might take something like the uh, AWS Linux, if that's a, an available thing, and try and run their old config, or maybe even the Microsoft CBL Mariner thing and, and run theirs as a starting point. Yeah, that, that um, looks like the best. If you look for the embedded uh, Linux kernels, those seem to be the most stripped down. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so of I, course, for this one, I'm running, I'm running a full OS, right? Like I'm running Ubuntu, and then I'm running my piano app on top of it. So I need a full GUI even uh, in order to do what I'm doing, which is part of the reason I picked the Ryzen 5 and not the Raspberry Pi. So I believe the AWS Linux uh, actually is just a somewhat of a close to being a rebrand of Red Hat. Oh, uh, CentOS 7. Yeah. The new 2023 is actually a Fedora ish operating system. Yeah. There's lots of squiggles and like asterisks next to that thing. But, and if, if you would like me to attempt the live demo, I can. <laughs> But it's just as likely that we will uh, uh, just see the box go offline and not come back. And I don't know that it's worth. <laughs> I don't know that it's worth like, hey, look, we failed. Uh, yeah. And another yeah. thing we've been discussing for two things that if you are on a show that actually does keep up the main line, it's kind of a pain because like every you know patch or minor version. They go and the kernel config is completely different. And they added a whole bunch of new things, so like it's it, like it's going to be a bit of a task to keep up with them. They're yeah. pretty task. And I believe Ubuntu has already applied most of the real time patches uh, to their copy of the kernel. If you're trying to build from their their sources, if I remember right, it's been a while since I've looked at it. I don't. I don't think they do I much with real time. Now, uh, the studio might, it's a studio mm -hmm. might, because they, I mean, they're focused on, on audio production and they, they, it comes with a lot of uh, pieces of software that require a little latency audio. Like they actually have uh, basically open source flavors of the same type of tool that I'm using for my piano, right? You can plug in a MIDI keyboard and have it produce piano sounds based on it. Now, the piano sets they produce are um, not at the same caliber as the proprietary programming mm -hmm. that I use, but yeah. So, close. so to clarify a bit, uh, they they've applied the options so that if you wanted, when you do the the config where it prompts you all of the the choices, you you can uh, actually oh, use it. Like if, you're saying, so if you go into like user source, uh, your kernel version, yeah. Those patches, like Pinky is saying, will be in there. So, like, oh. so another way to get the kernel that actually is go ask your package manager to go download the source for your running kernel, and it'll put it some spot in your file system, and then you can go compile that. Yep, no, it won't that be necessarily. Found yeah, that. it won't necessarily be latest latest. It'll be whatever is in yeah. the, the the package. Yeah, 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 the latest your distros kicking out. Yeah, yeah, but if you're just looking to make tweaks, you're running kernel. I mean that's. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I didn't see that as an option. Um, I also saw that it looked like a lot of distros like you could just go out and download this just the kernel source if you wanted. Yeah. Um so yeah, there there are a bajillion different ways to get various flavors and types and what out of the kernel source. There are so many years with the kernel other word stuff, and there's the, the GitHub repo, and I'm I'm sure there are other public Git things that you get from the actual, you know, mm -hmm. get off of the actual development. Yeah, because I saw, uh, I couldn't figure out how to get like GIT from the official kernel.org stuff, but I did see all the tarballs. And I found the instructions for the tarballs. Yeah. So, so getting from kernel.org, doing the GIT from kernel.org, you end up applying, Megan, what kernel do you want? Because that yeah. is light. <laughs> well, well, that's <laughs> funny. Because we want, do you want light? Do you want Linus's tree? Do you want like the developer of that of, the, of that subsystems tree? Do you want Gray Cage's so, tree for like backboard? So is is Linus is different from like mainline? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, like every uh, is, 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 his is the main. So if you want it in like what all their shows sync, you have to get him to pull into his tree. I don't know if my understanding is correct. So like you send patches. 
you know, in the email format yeah. to the mailing list. What? And then he and then he will pull it into his fork. What git command is most similar to the tarball? Git clone. You just gotta go find git clone what torbles. I think they're like the app or something on the yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's that half even on kernel. Or... You've got to go find like oh, okay. if you got to go on the kernel on the kernel's Git server. You have to go pick his branch, his his repo. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole things. I did. I did all like it's like all this stuff just to maintainers. So like have a different port. So like the I don't know the human interface devices subsystem. Like you submit patches to their mailing list. They'll look at it, pull it into their tree, and then it might get then they'll you know, like Linux type of thing. So like, and all of those yeah. like, it's very like sub team specific of how this works out. But in pulling the, the tarball, you'd be bypassing all of that. Yeah, you're bypassing all that. You should just be getting, you know, <clears throat> what line is cut for the release or yeah. red cage if you're getting one of the immediate mm -hmm. releases. Because you you might just pulling his latest, there might be something that he's still trying out that he's checked in that he has. Right, if you're on main or pass or whatever, he yeah, also should be fine. But mm -hmm. but you know, or just go or just go get a tag off of his thing. And yeah, yeah. Between yeah, between uh, trying on my 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 DNC desktop and the world mini PC. Uh, the version number actually changed slightly, mm -hmm. like it because it it advances, and I don't remember what it was. I think it was I think it was hack RC, and then it was plus. Um, but regardless, even from Linus's GitHub, it was it was a very very slightly different version number. Yeah, well, that's just strange. So, so Linus's Git that GitHub is a is a mirror of of the of that repo I was talking about. Yep, that is that is a mirror of Linus's tree. Yeah. And he just probably has an automated yeah. sync. He has automated sync. Also, wouldn't surprise me if GitHub has, you know, like special. There's, for a while, there was like a special icon on that repo that I think only that repo had. So, like, I'm not surprised that GitHub behind the scenes is doing some magic for him. Can you yeah. imagine, though, if, if someone asked uh, what Linus Torvald does for uh, kernel development, though, and he's like, well, every 20 minutes I hit the R pro and earn it, copies a new thing over to my GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything else is handled. Like we're good to go. Uh, uh, also, uh, to, to sort of answer your question, you don't know what Make does. Uh, there, basically, there's just a uh, file called Make file, make file yeah. and it has in there a list of all the different targets, and uh, basically, it points to all of the different files that can be compiled. And Make will go out and compare the uh, basically artifact that builds off of that and see if it was made before uh, the the file was last touched. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Understanding the whole target and one of the one of the issues I ran into with DKMS was uh, the error was along the lines of failed to make target slash k build. Mm -hmm. And like look through the make files for Kbuild, and it was just like it. I I didn't understand the syntax enough to do anything. Yeah, make is make is and yeah. You have to use tabs. Yes, tabs, not spaces. Go away if you try to use them. Also, it's the opposite. Of it. Yes, like mm -hmm. like you do have to use tabs. Um, but also the, I might prefer this. It's also this this it's syntax like you said. It's pretty arcane. It's also also. Probably it is. <laughs> also, uh, the kernel is making big is probably one from hell. Don't look at it. Don't look at it too closely. You, you, you might like make space hole into itself because it's kind of a, like the make files and how actually calls a a, a person's program. So like mm -hmm. you know, there's some sort of magic going on in there. Yeah. So I've used make before, like say with uh, LaTeX to build a uh, build my presentation or stuff like that. Uh, also, there are tools out there if you want to compile your own code and you don't want to build your own make, you want to make it easier. Oh, yeah, uh, so there's CMake. CMake or AutoMake. There's a whole bunch, yeah. of, there's a whole bunch of these tools that will, you have to run or make your make files for you. Yeah. Make before to compile software. Like, so that mm -hmm. part wasn't foreign to me. It was figuring out how to troubleshoot it because every other time, 
It I've either work. just it's either worked or I found an answer very quickly that was obvious or something like that. Like something I was doing wrong, not actually editing a file somewhere. So uh for example, the box mark, uh Proxmark, They always get those two words confused in my brain. Proxmark talk I gave, right? Like I, I downloaded, compiled, and installed. Like that was that. That's not something you can get in binary form, apparently, at least not easily. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that that worked fine. Uh, that was one of the more recent ones because most everything else has has been pre-compiled. I think I might have done VLC one time uh, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, way back when there were there were a lot of little things that needed compiled, various drivers and stuff, like a Theros, something or another. I remember uh, doing compiles and installs, and I feel like there was a, a compatible but not Flash Player, like Flash Player compatible replacement thing mm -hmm. that needed manually. So like, yes, yeah, so like I, I knew that it had to do with compiling software and that it used like a file to tell it how to do it, and that's kind of where my knowledge Start and stop. Just so the issue with the kernel. The problem is that if you're not GPL, you have to get to the tree. But that means you somehow have to get the that may call know about you because you're outside the tree, and then things just get very complicated very fast with outside of the tree. That's like that's why it's weird. It's because like Nvidia's because they're proprietary. Well, they're kind of open source now. Maybe mm -hmm. no, <laughs> no. They're First of all, I think every release to kick off a, uh, a one one git commit to a repo. <laughs> well, yeah. the 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 something yeah. though, right, is that yeah, even even for being as is proprietary and closed source and whatnot, you know what? That's what works. The Novio or whatever doesn't freaking work. Oh, well, there's the the AMD graphics stuff that I have doesn't work, even though oh, it's open source and supported and all that. Yeah, but it doesn't. Work. So yeah. and it, 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 it barely works. The mini PC I did eventually get the graphics to be mostly stable, but like that's that's a freaking radio built into the CPU. Like how freaking that be anyhow. Yeah. Oh thank, thank, thank you, Jordan. Jordan. Uh, yeah. For stupid reasons, the portal notes were always behind the discrete cards. It's a fifty five hundred. Like it's not like it's new. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's classic. It's classic. You know, getting a hardware company to actually do software for Linux, like it's like, yeah. Um, and I'm sure we can cut this recording short of my rant a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, I'm just ranting. We might as well. Yeah. Here we go. One thing is a. Uh, also, there's another thing. There's an alternative to uh, DKMS. There's AKMods as well. 